here in Hollywood, Hollywood, California, we're here at a Temple Nightclub. It's a gay Latino, it's a vaquero. We call it vaquero here in Los Angeles. And it's for uh, gay cowboys and admirers, basically. So we're doing HIV testing tonight. So this is our mobile testing unit. This is basically where we do our HIV tests. And pretty much we treat it like a laboratory, okay? Um, so far we have about a dozen people who are tested. As you can see, they all have a, a unique ID code that we have for our privacy. We all have negative results tonight, which is a good thing. Kenneth Almanza is an HIV counselor in Los Angeles. He has sex with men and takes PrEP, brand name Truvada. The pill can prevent HIV infection. He keeps an online video journal. These pills are something that are available for HIV negative men. Once you take this pill daily, after about a week or so, you can have protection in your body um, up to 99% against HIV. Now that I know that I have PrEP, it just gives me that sense of comfort in any situation that I'm in sexually. Not everyone is happy with the new pill. Like Michael Weinstein, president of the AIDS Healthcare Foundation in Los Angeles, the largest of its kind in America. First law of medicine is do no harm, and I believe that this intervention will do harm. Why? Because people will think they're protected when they're not. Uh, they won't use condoms, and uh, then infection rates will go up. Here we go. PrEP is also taken by women. It allows them to safely get pregnant by a man with HIV. I see you. She would not be here without PrEP. There was, there's no way we could have had her without PrEP. These are the laboratories of the Gladstone Institutes in San Francisco, California, and we're mainly focused here on HIV infection. Professor Robert Grant is a researcher. His team found that PrEP, short for pro-exposure prophylaxis, can prevent HIV infection. The pill has two medications that get inside of the cell, and it prevents that cell from uh, from replicating the virus. So the, the virus can get into the cell, but it does not spread from that cell because uh, it is blocked by those uh, medications inside of the cell. So they should take the pill daily for seven days before they should feel protected. And we ask that they take it for at least 28 days after their last uh, sexual exposure. A miracle pill more than 30 years after the discovery of HIV, which has caused millions of AIDS deaths worldwide. The American government approved PrEP and Truvada two years ago, and the pill has already prevented HIV patients from developing AIDS. It's now also available for healthy people to protect against HIV. The pill is popular among gay men, but how protective really is PrEP? If we look at everyone who received the drug, uh, whether or not they used it, uh, we saw that the risk of HIV reduced 44%. And so, um, but we also know that half of the people who received the pills did not take them, did not take them really at all. And those people were not protected. The, the half of people who take the pills every day uh, did not get infected. We saw no infections among people taking Truvada every day. The gold standard for data is effectiveness and what they call intent to treat, which is to take the whole group. Don't cherry pick the group and take the people who are most likely to adhere and, and base it on that and exclude all the others. Because we have to approximate a real world situation. How safe is it? Up till 100%? Well, in our most recent analysis, we saw no one become infected with HIV. So that means 100% effectiveness. Gay men are being used as guinea pigs. This is a mass experiment, okay? And, you know, who's going to be responsible if it ends badly? There's no way that we can guarantee that people will never become infected when taking PrEP. Uh, but we know that the uh, protective effect is more than 96% among uh, those who take it daily. And it could be much more than 96%. In fact, we see, to, to date, no one becoming infected if they take PrEP daily. But if they don't? If they don't, there's no protection at all. All right, let's just check your blood pressure. Howard Grossman is a doctor in New York. His patients are mostly gay men. He provides PrEP. Last fall, I probably had 
four or five people on PrEP who had come and asked me about it early on. Um, now I, I think we were up to almost 80 people. And every single day somebody walks in here and asks me about PrEP, at least one person, if not two or three or four. Grossman even takes PrEP himself. With condom use, he suffers from erectile dysfunction. I started taking PrEP in July. I had had two episodes where I had had unprotected sex. I can't guarantee my behavior. Here I am, somebody who's been involved in HIV for 30 years. I know, I know from the inside what it's like. I've lost uh, most of my good friends um, over the, this time. I went through the most horrible parts of the epidemic with patients, you know, hand in hand. Um, and if, if I couldn't guarantee my behavior, who, who could? So I thought, you know what, this makes sense. The effect of the pill remains in the body for some time. But for maximum protection, the pill should be swallowed daily. I'm a, a, a diabetic, less of a diabetic now that I, because I've lost a lot of weight in the last couple of years. Um, but I take an, in, I, an injection every day. Um, I take, you know, fish oils every day. I take probiotics every day. Um, it's not, it wasn't that hard to add another, minute, another pill. It's been about four months. One, two, three, four. Kenneth Almanza also has hardly any problems after four months. I've only missed maybe two doses um, because I was, I spent the night somewhere else. But other than that, it's been very easy. So the question is, will the people who won't consistently use a condom because they're undisciplined take medication every single day? What do you think? No. There are negative things to consider about PrEP. Resistance may occur, as well as side effects. One in 10 PrEP users had some nausea or some abdominal cramping, but typically it only lasted a week or two and resolved. We also found that it is necessary to monitor the uh, kidney function with blood tests every three months, but doing that, uh, people were able to stay safe. I haven't felt anything. You know, some people have complained of a little upset stomach or nausea the first couple of days. Truthfully, I think a lot of that's in their heads. <laughs> um, I, in my experience with people on tenofovir and emtricitabine, the two drugs that are in Truvada, is that it's very, very well tolerated. Well, we give this medication to people who have a deadly virus, okay? And the side effects have to be balanced about the fact that HIV untreated will kill you. Okay, so therefore it's a good trade-off. But if you're talking about giving this to 22-year-olds, uh, okay, um, we know that it is associated with bone loss and kidney disease, not in every person, but in a, in a, in a significant minority of people. And also, again, in the real world, are the young people who go on this, are they going to go every three months and get a kidney test? Uh, are they going to go and get a bone density test? No. Amongst HIV positive men and women, there was a lot of reportable side effects, but there wasn't any data that supported what would happen in an HIV negative individual. So I kind of thought to myself, well, do I really want to put myself in that situation? What if they show something comes down the line saying that PrEP was very, you know, adverse for the liver or something, you know? I still kind of have those thoughts, they still kind of run through my head. But so far, I haven't read any reportable side effects that have been serious. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm willing to serve as a guinea pig for my community because if I take it and something, God forbid, happens along the way, at least other negative men will be able to know that and make a more informed decision. There's more. You know, now that you're here for your every three month test, and Wayne, <coughs> Wayne's going to do a swab, a throat swab mm -hmm. for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Uh, then you'll okay. give us some urine and we'll also do a swab for anal gonorrhea and chlamydia. Um, if you're at any risk for that. People do need to understand that PrEP prevents HIV, but it does not prevent syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, or pregnancy. So there's um, other reasons to use condoms, even if people are using PrEP to prevent the, uh, HIV infection. PrEP may protect against HIV if properly taken. However, there are also disadvantages. Why not just rely on condoms? What may be easy for you or for someone else is not easy for me. It's a psychological thing, it's an emotional thing, it's a physical thing. In the heat of the moment, in any situation, 
even if a condom's there, I know a majority of the time people aren't going to use it. And I know that because I'm a counselor and I've tested thousands of people over the, the last four years. We know that condoms are the best way to prevent HIV. And we need to tell people the truth. That is the best way to prevent HIV and other STDs. We shouldn't just give that message that if you're on PrEP, you can stop using condoms in every situation. I'm not sure we know enough yet to say that. PrEP can be a backup to condom use. Uh, or it can be uh, a way of preventing HIV among those who are not using condoms for whatever reason. What we need to do is focus our condom message on the unknown partner, that unknown hookup, the person where you really don't know their situation. When it went before the FDA for approval, everyone was saying it will be used with condoms. And I said baloney, you know, uh, bullshit. You know, it's not going to be used. If, if, if people, are, why would they take this medication if they intended to use condoms? It doesn't make sense. As far as these little guys, you know, I haven't been using them. Um, I, I was very sporadic even before I started PrEP, but I knew I didn't really like condoms. Um, so they're going out of business. Each year, America counts 50,000 new HIV cases. The medical ethics discussion has focused on PrEP use by gay men, while almost half of the users are female. One of them was Poppy Morgan. Her husband has HIV. The two wanted a child together, PrEP, or Truvada offered a solution. There was a time when we were both taking Truvada. He was taking it for treatment. I was taking it for prevention. It felt very strange to take the same medication. Um, it's a you know strong medication, so it felt it just felt strange. But um, I never felt any side effects. You know, I didn't feel anything. Stress strikes when the two have sex without a condom for the first time. There were times I would get so worried that you know I contracted the virus even though I know the science said it's a very low chance. There was always the what if. Yeah, always. Made my husband very nervous. He was very nervous all the time. He was afraid he had infected me. Yeah, he was always afraid of that every time. Um, so it was a lot of stress to deal with in our relationship, you know. After a year and a half and over 500 prep pills, Poppy got pregnant. In 2013, Daisy was born. Uh, baby was born in April. Um, and yeah, I was negative, she was negative. When we used to just look at her, we would both cry because of the miracle that she was. Um, you know, like I said, she would not be here without PrEP. There was, there's no way we could have had her without PrEP. Um, so that's the only reason she's here. Yummy. I don't think I would want to stay on PrEP. We can use condoms, that's okay. I don't know though. I have to think, you know, I think about it all the time. Should I or shouldn't I? But um, I just think it's, at this point, I think it's too risky, the side effects and, and exposing my body to such strong medication might not be the best healthy choice. You doing okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So today, uh, your result is HIV negative. If it's hard for you to wear condoms, I would consider maybe um, using PrEP. PrEP costs about 1,000 euros per month. In America, the costs are often covered by insurance. After an additional examination, Kenneth's insurance fully covers the medication. This PrEP study is only going to last two years. So after that, I have to figure out, am I going to continue PrEP? Am I how, what insurance provider am I going to have at that moment? Can you afford it? I couldn't afford it, no. No, I couldn't afford it otherwise. The public insurance companies, as well as the private insurance companies, do pay for PrEP. And they pay for PrEP because they'd much rather pay for a few months of PrEP than lifelong HIV treatment. And, um, and, and, and that's an important point to make. By preventing an HIV infection, uh, with a few months of PrEP use, we can prevent the need for lifelong HIV treatment, which is more expensive and, and more toxic than, than PrEP. The World Health Organization is pro-PrEP, but in most European countries it's not yet registered. The drugs manufacturer Gilead has not yet submitted PrEP to the EU for approval. It's waiting for further European research. 
GGD Amsterdam wants to start a pilot project with PrEP in 2015 for men having sex with other men. Professor Grant believes that Europe has to take quick steps. It can save lives. It will save lives. And so I would encourage um, the European medical authority to review the available data and, to, uh, and to, to make decisions as quickly as possible. One thing I would add is that um, these uh, government institutions uh, typically do not act unless there's demand. And so uh, people in the Netherlands, if they want PrEP, should uh, let their elected officials know that and say, you know, why are we allowing HIV to continue to spread in our, in our country? Why aren't we doing everything we know how to do to uh, stop the spread of HIV? At the end of the day, we're going to have the results of this grand experiment in about two years. We're going to have the people on PrEP who seroconvert. We're going to have the people who develop drug resistance. We're going to have, uh, you know, increasing rates, which we already have for syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia. Okay. And so we'll see how this experiment works. So, you know, we're not going to wage a huge campaign. Um, but we've been through this before, and we're confident that the results will bear out what we're saying. And if we're wrong, we'll be happy to admit it. <laughs>